Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Programming and Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop. Today's video is going to be a continuation of our Access SQL, or SQL. And more specifically, today we're going to talk about the simple operators that we can use in our WHERE clause, as well as using multiple, um, multiple criteria in our WHERE clause. So let's go ahead and hop out here and take a look at our first query that we're going to do up here with the WHERE clause. And we're just going to go ahead and mimic what we had on the previous uh, video here. So we're going to do select table one employees. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy this so they don't have to keep typing it each time. And we're going to do ID. We're going to get the first name, last name, username. And I'm also going to add the employee type underscore ID because I want to actually select it so that you guys can see it in the results when we pull them up here. Okay, then we're going to do from, again, table one employees. Now we can start our where clause. So we've got where, and we're going to do table one employees, employee type underscore ID is equal to three. Now just so that you guys can recall this, uh, anyone with an employee type, type underscore ID equal to three. We should just have the one account here, which I believe is me. Yes, it's me, okay? And if you recall, this particular field, the employee type underscore ID, is actually the foreign key field that ties back to the table to employee types. So if we look at this, we can see uh, ID value of one, an employee type of one is a sales rep. Employee type of two is an account manager, an employee type of three is administrator. So we're able to filter out and just grab those employees oops, who are administrators, okay? So when we view this, we're just gonna have the one account. So that is how we are filtering. We're just grabbing those fields, those columns that we need by using our select statement. And we're only getting the one row as a return result because of the filtering that we're due inside of this where clause here. Okay, so that's how you can really narrow down and get very specific data uh, that's returned as your result. Now let's go through some of the other operators. Oops, uh, we had equal to three. So let's try not equal to three. So that should be everybody except for me. And sure enough, Jane, Stan, Joe, and Debbie. Okay, that's good. Next, let's do anybody who is greater than, let's go with greater than one. Okay, and that would be me and Jane. Now remember Jane is an account manager, right? We can see she's got an employee type of two and I've got an employee type of three. So that obviously is greater than one. So let's do greater than or equal to one. That's gonna be me, Jane, and Stan because again, greater than one, greater than one, equal to one. Okay, so that's why we have greater than or equal to one. Let's do less than or equal to one. Okay, so now it's Stan because he is an employee type that is equal to one. And then of course we have Joe and Debbie who have an employee type of zero, which is less than one, okay? And then lastly, let's go ahead and take out the equal sign. So we've got less than one, and that's just gonna return the two employees that we have of employee type of zero. All right, so there you go. There's some of the simple equations that you can do as part of your WHERE clause. Now let's talk about adding multiple parameters or multiple criteria to this particular WHERE clause. Just like what we had in the VBA when we were doing IF statements, you can also do AND or you can do OR. So let's go ahead and do AND. Okay, so we have table one employees dot employee type underscore ID is greater than, let's do uh, greater than one. And let's see, what other criteria can we filter by? Let's do where their wage is, so we know it's greater than one. So the two results that we would get would be me and Jane, if we were to run this query as just greater than one, because we're the only two employees that have a value greater than one. But what if I also filter out by the wage? So I'm gonna say anybody who makes more than $20. So that should 
exclude me and only return Jane because Jane will be the only one who is both an employee type underscore ID greater than one, okay, and also has a wage that is greater than 20. So let's go ahead and do that. So, and table one employees, oops, employees, uh, wage is greater than 20. Okay, so now when we view this, we can see Jane is the only one that comes up with both of those pieces of criteria. Let's go ahead and shift this around a little bit. I'm going to actually drop this down to e is greater than or equal to 1. So we should now also get, uh, we should get Stan, but notice he's $10. So he's still going to be excluded because he doesn't make more than $20. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's change this and to or. So now we're getting all of the employees, right, from table one employees, where the employee type underscore ID is greater than or equal to one, or, again, or the wage is greater than 20. And that should give all three of us, Steve, Jane, and Stan, okay? And if we want to, just so that we can verify this, I'm just going to go ahead and throw this up in my select statement and take this wage. We're just going to show it up here. I'm going to add it to the select. And you can see that wage is, in fact, not a factor here because his employee type underscore ID is greater than or equal to one. So even though he only makes $10 an hour, I suppose, um, since this value is equal, it does match within this particular criteria of employee type underscore ID equal or greater than or equal to one. Since it matches that criteria, he's going to get listed since this is an or. But as soon as I change this to and, then we're back to just showing Jane. All right. So that's how you can have multiple criteria. You can use the and or the or statement. But let's go one step further there's a little bit more com complexity that we may have. Maybe we want to do everybody who is an employee type that is greater than or equal to one, or they're making more than $20 an hour. And of these two, uh, of these two possibilities, I want to filter it out even more. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put parentheses around this or statement. So right now, if I run this, we're going to get the three of us, right? Steve, Jane, and Stan. But I also want to, of the three that come back, let's say that I want to find anybody who has a date of birth that is greater than, say, 5-12-1985. Actually, let's make it 5-11. Okay, so let's go back to our query. Oops, I want to go into SQL view. There we go. So now I can do and, and this is outside of those parentheses. So it's first going to evaluate this and return those results. Then we're going to further filter out by another and, and we're going to do table one employees dot dob, which is date of birth, is greater than. And when you're dealing with dates, don't forget you need to use hashtags or pound signs, whichever, however old you are, you may be calling them one or the other or both. I'm going to use five eleven as our criteria. So anybody, again, let's just kind of look through this here. We're getting all of the employees, okay, from table one employees, where the employee type underscore ID is greater than or equal to one, or they make more than $20. Now of those, of the results that get returned back from those two pieces of criteria, we also want to make sure that they are also older than having a date of birth, or excuse me, their date of birth is later than 5-11-1985. So we're going to get younger people, basically. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. And now we get Jane and Stan, because again, my date of birth, if we take a look, my date of birth is older than 5-11-1985. So we only get Jane and Stan. So that's how you can add multiple filters, multiple criteria. Oops. Let's go into our SQL view. There we go. So that's how you can add multiple criteria. And you can, you know, you can put more parentheses around this whole thing so that you can really specify exactly how your filter is going to work out 
what, resor what results to return back. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the uh, in the post in the uh, the comments below this video. And uh, next up, we're going to do the more complex things like the between, the in, and the like. Okay, so I hope to see you there.